Now, let us quickly see whether we have covered everything before I summarize for you in five minutes what we've done. Basically, what we've done is I've said the following from the beginning. When I had my reaction and I put in the magnesium ribbon into hydrochloric acid, it was heating up, and that's one observation. If the examiner asks you an examination, what's your observation? You say the test tube or the system or the experiment was heating up. That means energy was coming out of the system. If he gives you another one, he says to you, here is one that was getting cold. I can simply say, okay, that means energy was taken in from the surrounding. But no observation, what did I feel since it was getting colder? Observation is simply, simply using your senses. Not your science knowledge, your senses. It was getting colder. It was getting hotter. And that's my observation. And you need to read your questions carefully in the examination. If they ask you, what do you observe? You say, I feel this one was getting colder. I noticed that. Well, I measured with a, with a thermometer, and I noticed that the temperature was going down. Okay, that's your observations. And secondly, we then told you about to do calculations. I will test you now, now. And then lastly, we looked at these two graphs, which are very important for you to understand. All these labels you need to understand, and all the definitions on pages one to four you need to know. Just a quick summary for you on my screen once again. On my screen, this comes from the examination guidelines in 2009. It says what the learners must be able to do. If you haven't heard about the examination guidelines, make sure that you ask your teachers about this. It says the learners must be, be able to explain the concept enthalpy and its relationship to the heat of reaction. Enthalpy, the total heat content of a system. Okay, then define exothermic and endothermic reactions. Simply, either heat is taken in or given out to the surrounding. Identify that bond breaking requires energy that is endothermic and that bond formation releases energy that is exothermic. Well, I've shown you those two steps. And then you must state for endothermic reactions, delta H is greater than zero. The delta has been left out. And in both cases, including the graph. And then you need to know something about activation energy. What is activation energy? And explain a reaction in terms of two things. Energy is changing, but this is bond breaking and bond formation. And then you need to know what is the activated complex. Ask your teachers for a copy for the examination guidelines of 2009. You will find this there. Just a summary for you. If, is this exothermic or endothermic? What do you think? Let me ask you quickly. I'm going to add magnesium ribbon to hydrochloric acid. OK. What do you think what will happen? I will not go into detail because my machine will not run it today. Let me go to the next one. Do you recall the following? That during a chemical reaction, there are two steps. The first one, you break the bonds. Energy is taken in, and that step is called endothermy. Step number two is when you take the activated complex with all the loose, unstable atoms and molecules, and you make new bonds, and energy is released. And that step is called the exothermic step. Whichever is the greater, we call that the whole process that one. And here we have energy profiles. Let me ask you a quick question. We've got one minute to go. I'll ask you a very quick question. If you look at this one, let's say graph A, what is the activation energy of this graph, of the forward reaction? I went from this side to that side. Activation energy starts where? From a reactant 
receiving maximum energy that means 1 2 so in and it is in kilojoules so this answer is activation energy is 2 kilojoules then I ask you another question what is delta H or the heat of reaction what is the heat of reaction in this graph how do you do it products minus reactants so it's 1 minus 3 gives you minus 2 what is the unit kilojoules okay when you go to number B, it might be slightly more difficult. What comes on this axis? Oh, the potential energy, AP there. What comes here? The cause or the steps in the reaction. What is the amount? What does A plus B mean? And what does C mean? Ah. A plus B is A, that is the reaction, the reactants. And what is C? The products. Now let me ask you two or three questions. What is the heat of reaction for this kind of reaction? It is the energy of the product minus the energy of reactant or HF minus HI which is X minus Y. There we go. Can I just ask you the next question? Is this an endothermic or exothermic reaction? This part is endothermic that part is exothermic, which part is bigger, this one, bigger than that one, therefore this is an exothermic reaction. Now for a very difficult question, what is the amount or the magnitude of the activation energy? Where is the activation energy again? From a reactant, put in energy to break the bonds to form activated complex or enough energy to start the reaction, that means Z minus Y. Make sure you understand that one, Z minus Y. Okay, I think we have done most of the important ideas behind exothermic and endothermic. Let me remind you what they are again. Do you know what we mean when we ask for what are your observations? In other words, what do you feel, what do you see, what do you smell, sometimes what do you taste. But we normally don't do that in a chemical laboratory. So it's normally what you feel, what you see, were there any color changes, uh, was there any heat that you felt, etc. Those are your observations. Secondly, can you do the bond energy calculation? Simply take break the bonds first separately, read it from the table the values, and add it up. Then you take your bond making side, and you read it again from the table, and then you take the last one, the final one, bond breaking, minus bond making, and then you get your answer. If your answer is a positive answer, then delta H is greater than zero, it's a negative answer, then delta H is less than zero. Lastly, do you know your graph? Do you know all your axes? Do you know the different names? Do you know the different labels? Labels like reactants, forward reaction, activated complex, products, delta H or heat of reaction. If you know all of those, then I think and you can look forward to the examination with great enthusiasm.